I started playing baseball when I was young, when I was about four years old. My dad was always my baseball coach. You know, I learned a lot of lessons from him, you know, coming up through Little League. I was able to get drafted in the first round in 2009 by the Colorado Rockies. It had taken a small army to help me get there. That was beautiful. After I got drafted, slowly made it up to the big leagues by 2014. 2015, uh, with the, got what we call in baseball uh, the yips, where I couldn't throw a baseball more than 10 feet. You know, and I'm a professional athlete, and I could not throw the ball to save my life. It was terrible. I went and saw a bunch of psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, baseball gurus, everything you could imagine, and just nothing was really working. 2016 didn't play much, 2017 didn't play baseball at all. I was completely out of baseball. Baseball was Tyler's identity, and when he was failing per se, I feel like he was like, what's my purpose in life? I have no plan B. I had a ex-teammate reach out and say, hey, I have a guy you need to meet, and he changed my life. He said, all right, you got the yips. What, are you gonna sit there and just stay and have the yips for the rest of your life, or are you gonna turn the page and go ahead and make the best out of the situation. Just somebody showing me a little bit of support helped me to believe that I was able to do this. I used to take failure so bad. I just would fail at something and then let it erode away at me. It just took time changing my mindset. There are gonna be failures in this life and I think failing doesn't make you a failure. I think that that's one thing if I could go back and, and learn as a kid would be how to fail. Understanding that when you fail, it is just an opportunity to get better for the next time. My wife, Lauren, she's helped me through this entire journey. She's been, she's been my rock. She was an outlet for me. She said, you, maybe you should talk about your feelings. Maybe that'll help you actually like, you know, stop holding on to things, stop being anxious. It's okay if you're feeling mad. It's okay if you're feeling sad. Those are normal feelings. It doesn't make you weak or lesser because you're expressing how you feel. I would text him, say, how was the game? And he was just like, you know, I did all right. And it's like, you barely, you know, gave up anything and you won the game. And now he'll strike someone out and he's, you know, fist pumping and jumping and like screaming and all of that. And it's just really cool to see the transformation of being someone who never really celebrated their successes to being super excited and in the moment. I think whether it's sports or just life, I mean, something's bound to happen that's out of your control, and you just gotta keep picking yourself back up again. I've realized, along with Tyler, how to process things better, be more aware of what mental health really looks like. It's not a one-size-fits-all with all of mental health and resilience and how you work through problems. The goal was always for him to play again, and then to come back and not only play again, but win a World Series. I mean, it's been wild. The first thing he said when he ran up to me after they won was, we did it, we did it. I think it's very important to teach kids resilience because it prepares them for the rest of their life. Yeah, I like to tell kids, have a dream and go after it.